Now imagine this, a surveillance system that detects and classifies moving entities automatically. A camera that detects gunshots and gun-related crime. An information system that unlocks smart agriculture. Well, you don't have to imagine, because the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research has already invented these and many other innovative tools. Amidst concerns about crime, a porous borders and climate change, there are scientists and engineers hard at work to come up with a way to make our future safer and more sustainable. The CSIR has today set up a structure to commercialize its innovations, CSIR C-Cubed. And to tell us more, I'm joined by Vuyani Jahana, who is the board chairperson of the CSIR. Mr. Jahana, thank you so much for joining us. So tell me what exactly is CSIR C-Cubed? I think you might have muted yourself. Yes, it's one of the cardinal sins, right? So apologies. CSR Secured is one of the entities that is set up by the CSIR to focus on commercialization of technology. South Africans would know that there's a lot of innovation and inventions inside the CSIR. What we sought to do is to make those innovations and inventions much more meaningful in society by creating a vehicle, a special purpose vehicle that's going to collaborate with industry and package these and productize them so that they can actually reach the market and be able to have a much more bigger impact. So that's that's what that's what CQ is about. All right. So now let's delve into some of these innovations. This wide area surveillance system, it detects and classifies moving entities. I mean, how is this a game changer? Is this something that could be used at our poorest borders? It's absolutely. So it's, it classifies, it uh, detects, does the classification between humans and animals and, and classifies various objects in an open space. Already this technology has been used in the Kruger National Park for the anti-poaching drive. So it's been very, very successful. The same applies around border control. We could easily easily implement it along the lines um, of our borders to actually make sure that everyone comes into the country within a very structured process and we are able to separate humans from animals through this type of classification. So, but to do this, you need to scale, you need to commercialize, you need to make sure it's available through commercial agreements. And that's why the CQ is a platform and a vehicle that we've created. Scientists must continue to innovate, but we want to make sure that they are commercial people whose job is to take the patents, IP, and the products, take them to market. Yeah, makes sense. And then another idea is a camera that detects gunshots and gun-related crime. How does that differ from a normal camera that would capture a shooting, and how will it help fight crime? It's a, it's a very big innovation from our side. Obviously, the software application uh, can actually be applied into some of the cameras that are standard cameras, but up to now, a lot of detection of gun discharge has been through acoustics using optic fiber networks, which makes it very difficult to actually look at crime areas. So today, if you look at safe city, safe city applications, uh, if you look at townships that are challenged, for example, with crime, once you deploy cameras and you put the technology that we've developed, all of a sudden you are able to see images and, uh, and gun discharged uh, uh, incidents. And then obviously the police can be able to address the area in a much more systemic thing. While you're living in an era of data, big data is key. So the more rich the data on surveillance, on incident uh, tracking management, the, the better opportunities to deal with crime. So it's one of the areas where we can actually assist a lot in crime prevention, crime detection, working with the police. And how, how close is this? Is this already in the market um, or is it still a prototype? It's a, no, it's, it's, it's ready for commercialization. So what, we, what we're looking at is to take the product into market at scale. It's beyond prototyping. These are tested technologies that are ready for scale. Hence, this vehicle that we are creating is the one that has to look at channels, that look at partnerships, that look at client demands, and be able to, to, to actually fulfill those through this kind of uh, technology. And then I've got to ask you about uh, this information system that unlocks smart agriculture because we know that climate change and making the best use of our land to grow crops as climate change takes hold is going to be absolutely crucial. How does this work? It's a, it's a, beautiful, it's a beautiful development, this precision agriculture. It actually gives a, an, an, an aerial view of 
the crop production, crop development challenges that are happening in a, in a particular farm. It's going to be more, it's becoming increasingly more and more important to those solutions when you look at contract, contract agriculture, for example. Also, from the financiers of agriculture production, the risk on, on agriculture is huge. So information technology, um, big data, uh, digital platforms becomes very important. For example, if a bank is financing uh, myself and said I'm a five times per hectare producer of, of uh, maize, for example, so they they don't necessarily know really if I am, but they take my word. And then when you look at precision agriculture, there's history year on year. Then the lending into the agriculture space can it can a lot more can be a lot more easy because you're actually de-risking. You're using information technology and digital technology to de-risk agriculture through transparency, but also visibility in terms of early management of risks that are inherent in agriculture science. So lenders should be interested, contract farming operations, those who are buying the production ahead of, 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 uh, of its mm -hmm. development. Should have should have visibility using the same platform. Now these are just also insurance companies should also take interest on this. Right, these are just three ideas of a host that the CSIR has, um, and I think that the council has for many years had great ideas. But now it's 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 good that it's going to be, as you say, taking that next step to roll it out to market, which obviously means scaling up big time, um, and then it can also make money. Um, how did this come about? I mean, I, of course I know your name because you used to be at SAA. I'm wondering if this is something that you've pushed. Um, tell me a little bit more about uh, how it came about. Yeah, the, the, the strategy for commercialization, to be honest, uh, comes from the strategy of, uh, of CSIR from 2019. We, as a new board, we found the thinking being there. What we pushed for, we pushed for the approval of the entity but obviously, we're pushing to scale the intervention. Uh, our view is that the fruits of uh, scientific discovery and inventions should fall into the hands of ordinary people. And the best way of doing that without distracting scientists is to create a special purpose vehicle whose job is going to translate science into, into practical solutions into the market. So there's a range of innovations. But also what's key is that it's not just what sits inside CSR. We are creating a platform where we can collaborate with industry, private sector, innovators, SMEs, um, venture capitalists who, who have to bring in the cash to actually commercialize this, this in, invention. So this is the platform. It's an ecosystem that over a period of time will build, but the center of it is secured. Sounds absolutely amazing and just what we need. Thank you so much for telling us about it. Vuyani Jahana is board chairperson of the CSIR, telling us all about C-cubed. And with that, time.